All right, hello everyone. My name is Boulevard, and we're going back to the more traditional tournament tactician style. In that, like, I am I'm still streaming on Twitch every Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, to sort of build out the tier list with chat. But I decided that you know last week I just uploaded the raw vod. Y'all didn't seem to love that. So what I'm gonna do is, um, after I do the stream, I'm just going to shoot a normal tournament tactician with the information available. So that said, going into this weekend. Uh, Samira Fizz and Samira Varus are still putting up really good numbers in tournament. I think Samira Fizz might be the best Samira deck, and I think what is happening with Samira Varus is that the only people that are still playing this are, like, top-tier players. I don't think you're seeing a lot of randoms. At least that's, like, my assumption. This is based off of nothing, right? Could be totally wrong on that. But the way that I see it, like, Samira Varus has still been putting up very good numbers in tournaments, and I think it's just because, like, only good players are playing it. Everyone else looked at it, went, oh, you know, everyone's talking about how this got nerfed so hard, and you're just not seeing a lot of unskilled pilots, and I think this deck might just be gapping people because of that. And then Samira Fizz, you would think, would be losing to a lot of the same things Bandle Gunners is, but because this is more elusive-focused, whereas this is more impact-focused, you know, if people want to play against Bandle Gunners and beat it, like, they're kind of loading up with more chump blockers, and that doesn't really work as well against Samira Fizz. And I think that's why Samira Fizz is still doing big numbers. Obviously, Aatrox Vayne, still, like, the tallest mid-range deck for the most part, and, like, the most resilient one against Control, which has been picking up some uh, points here and there, so... Aatrox Vayne still doing very well. And then Bandle Gunners. I want to quickly break down the three different factions of Bandle Gunner because the first thing I posed to chat was, do you think you can run a triple Bandle Gunner lineup? Like, how important is Tristana? Because in theory, you should be able to go, like, um, you know, Tristana in either Bilgewater or Noxus. Just run champion strength Bandle Gunner without Tristana, you know, some other champion. I think Poppy rotated. I have to assume Poppy rotated on the fact that, like, no one's running Poppy in the Demacia versions. And then, like, maybe you go, like, a Samira Noxus Bandle Gunner version? Like, would that be a lineup? The overwhelming response seemed to be no. People think the deck is very reliant on Tristana. And even when I was like, okay, well, what if we just go down to double and you do like, you know, Bilgewater, Tristana, and then like Champion Strength Bandle Gunner, uh, the question that chat put up was like, is that the best Champion Strength deck? To which the resounding answer seemed to be not really, especially since people are coming in to like beat Bandle Gunners. But what we kind of boiled these down to also is like Bilgewater is the most popular and kind of the strongest variant baseline because it gets that additional threat in the boat. Demacia is the build that is winning the mirror. And so I have no idea why you would play Noxus. I don't know why you would play Noxus Bandle Gunner. I wasn't able to come to a conclusion on that one. And if you are looking to like pick on Bandle Gunners, Aatrox, Demacia Bandle Gunners, and Samira Fizz all have good matchups into... Uh, you know, Bilgewater and Noxus Bandle Gunners. So if this is a deck where you're like, okay, yeah, this is really broken, everybody's going to be running it, this is the kind of lineup that you want to be looking at. That's why it's over here on the side of the screen. I'm going to get rid of that now. Then down in Tier 2, Karma Set took a little bit of a dive. I think as we get more into these board-focused decks, you're just having a higher presence of decks in the meta that do well against Karma Set, whereas previously you were kind of limited on your options. We, like, just didn't have as many, like, mid-range-esque decks or, like, as many board-based decks. I think Karma Set is still a very good deck. I think it's fine if, like, you're running into a more localized control meta because control is still doing very well. Like, we look back at the Saturday Scramble and the finals of Sorry vs. Matty 24 Mayo was, like, Heimer, Jace, and Nora Vigar up against, um, it was like Seraphine Targon and Sentinel Control. So, like, Control is obviously still doing things in the meta, and I think if you expect a high presence of that, that's where Karma Set's going to come in. And what I kind of boiled it down to is, if things persist as I expect them to into the WCQ Open, then I think Karma Set is a very good deck for Top Cut and not for Swiss. And I think that's where we're kind of settling on that for the time being. But again, the Mastering Runeterra Open is this weekend, so I'll be able to get a little bit more information on that before we head into the WCQ. If you want to sign up for that tournament, there is an entry fee, but I will have a link in the description below, and I will be shoutcasting it on Saturday at, I think it's Mastering Runeterra's Twitch channel, so be on the lookout for that. And then Heimer, Jason, Nora, Control have just been, like, coming up a little bit. Both Nora Vigar and Nora Nar are things that have been picking up points. And I'm a little curious about, you know, can you do, like, a Heimer, Jace, uh, a Nora Nar, and then, like, a Senna Vigar and just call that a lineup? My gut says yes. I'm not sure how far it would take you. I don't think your matchups are great into Bandle Gunners. Like, Heimer, Jace is on the cusp of being good into Bandle Gunners, and I'm thinking we might need to go back to a more turret-focused build. The sample that I have here, I do want to point out, is turret-focused, but that's because it is from Sari's list at the uh, Saturday Scramble last weekend where he got second place, so... 
you know, already clocked up for that one. Uh, but I, t I popped into like Majin Bay stream yesterday and he was like, I'm just not on the turret package at all. So players are still kind of figuring out where Heimer Jace is supposed to settle. But I do want to point out that like while we've got this, um, you know, this mid range style meta with like, you know, deep and Aatrox Vein still doing very well. And then like these board focused decks of like the Bandle Gunners and the Samira decks still doing very well. Like control is keeping pace. And then down in tier three, Jarvan the fourth, as I continuously say, like the Jarvan decks are solid. They're kind of hard to misplay. And I think that's why they're continuously doing well and finding their way into lineups. Samira Pantheon, I think people really overhyped last weekend. I don't think it's a bad deck, but I don't think it's the best Samira deck. And I can't find a reason to run the Samira deck. And ultimately, the issue that I had with Pantheon was I was afraid it wasn't going to be able to go over deep in Aatrox Vein or even around it. And that seems to be what people have found as well. Echo Jinx has been picking up more percentage points as we kind of get back into that board focused meta, which makes sense. Echo Jinx does very well into board based decks because of the trade off the board revive with the Chrono Break style of gameplay. And then Jack Seraphine, How the Mighty Have Fallen. We were talking last week about how I'm pretty sure there's a Seraphine deck out there. I don't know that it is Jack Seraphine anymore, but I'm, I'm convinced that there is some Seraphine bar deck. I'm not sure that it is this Seraphine Targon that Maddie brought. In fact, I'm almost certain that it's not, but it is another Seraphine option. So I figured I would throw it on the tier list as a sample for you so that you at least have a baseline on what you're building out these other decks to look like and your expectations therein. Now, the open is next weekend. So I'll have... You know, next week, earlier in the week, I will have a tournament tactician focused for the open with stats into the top decks, and we'll have a little bit of a better idea of how the Bandle Gunner decks play in now that everybody's more aware of them. But Bandle Gunners actually did pretty poor numbers last weekend. I know some of you saw it in tier three and it was like, okay, yeah, obviously this deck's good boulevard, but like its tournament numbers were not indicative of a tier one deck. So I'm happy with my decision to just tentatively put it down in tier three. But I think now the latter popularity has exploded and we've found so many different variants that this should have a really high presence this weekend. But that is going to do it for me. This is the tier list. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Boulevard. As always, good luck in your tournaments. And again, if you want to sign up for the Mastering Runeterra event, there is a link in the description below to do that. Or if you just want to watch it because you don't feel like paying $20 to enter this tournament, then you can do so on twitch.tv slash Mastering Runeterra, I think. I don't know. Check the... Check the LOR category tomorrow after noon EST and you'll see the channel and I'll be casting that with Sparkling Ice Tea so you can get an idea of what to expect going into the open. 